ఆట హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ ఐ వెల్కమ్ టు ఆల్ ఫర్ ది యూట్యూబ్ క్లాసెస్ టుడే ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు టేక్ పొలిటికల్ సైన్స్ సెకండ్ చాప్టర్ ద ఇండియన్ ఫారిన్ పాలసీ ఫారిన్ పాలసీ ఆఫ్ అవర్ కంట్రీ చీర్ యూనో a study of how different countries interact with other countries and what type of relationship they strive to maintain is needed you know every country what it needed what type of foreign policy we have to maintain and how what type of relationship with other countries have to maintain is very important It means they are it is a study how to maintain a good relationship with other countries of the world and what type of relationship is needed for our betterment for our country's development it is just like an individual who cannot live alone you know individual he cannot live alone we cannot live alone we need the necessary we need the necessity of other people we need the necessity of the neighbors like every country needs the assistance of other countries assistance of the neighboring countries the countries also cannot live isolation they cannot live isolation every country need the help of the other country every individual need help of the other individual like every countries of the world they need the help and assistance of other countries for the development of agriculture industry trade commerce etc it need the assistance or the help of other countries interaction with other countries is very important so every country is needed to have a foreign policy to regulate its interaction with other countries every countries of the world have to have a foreign policy to regulate its interactions with other countries of the world in out of 200 countries in the world few countries are very strong and most of them are very weak you know in the world 200 countries are there among these 200 countries only few countries are very strong they are very advanced they are very rich countries and most of the countries are very backward they are very poor according to expert every for every sovereign country has its own foreign policy according to the experts according to political experts every for sovereign country has its own foreign policies a sovereign country is that which is not under the control under the under any other country's control every sovereign country you know india it is a sovereign country india is a sovereign it is a democratic country it is not under the control of any other countries of the world either for its internal or the external issues you know we are independent we are not under the control of any other countries of the world in issues like internal it may be internal issues or the external issues we are independent it is an important that india had its own foreign policy before independence and after independence so it is very important point to note that our country it has its own independent foreign policy before independence and after independence also india has been considered as one of the major countries of the world with its own fo- own population natural resource military force internal and intellectual and industrial industrialized capacities and india is one of the few countries in the world who pursue their own foreign policy our see is the country which pursue its own foreign policy so india became free from the british in 1947 as an independent country india want to peaceful 
coexistence with other countries of the world when it became independence in 1947 india became independence and that time it wants to have a peaceful coexistence with other countries of the world the aims of our foreign policy or national security you know the aims of our foreign policy that to ensure to maintain the national security maintaining the national security for maintaining the national security india had its india is its own foreign policy it is maintaining a good relationship with other countries of the world or it is maintaining a good relationship with the neighboring country, neighboring countries like you know sri lanka bangladesh china and pakistan it is maintaining a good relationship with the neighboring countries of neighboring countries for maintaining the national security then enriching the national economy to develop the national economy the foreign policy is very important interaction with other countries of the world is very important because for the economic development of any country it had it is it is maintaining a good relationship with other countries so for economic development for enriching the national economy we have to maintain the good relationship with other countries and spreading the cultural richness of our country in other countries to spread the richness to, to spread the cultural richness of our country that foreign policy is very important it is also the aim of the foreign policy to spread the our culture to spread the cultural richness of our country we have a foreign policy means it is also the aim of the our foreign policy and by interacting number of friendly countries you know increasing the number of friendly countries when we increase the number of friendly countries we can stop we can check the power of enemy country you know when we increase the number of friendly countries you can stop the we can check the power of the enemy country for that purpose india is its own foreign policy these are the important aims of our foreign policy you know the first one is the national security enriching the national economy spreading the cultural richness of our country to other countries and by increasing the number of friendly countries we can stop we can check the power of the enemy countries and achieving world peace and coexistence to achieve the world peace and coexistence is also one of the important aim of our foreign policy and you know the world is a cruel world is cruel we want to ho- hoist the flag of peace and flag of peace everywhere but we were cheated you know india is a peace loving country our country is a peace loving country but the world is cruel you know everywhere the terrorists are there you know the terrorists are there anti national activities are going on so the world is cruel but india want to hoist the flag of peace and coexistence everywhere in the world but every time we are cheated from the other countries for example from pakistan and from china we are cheated you know we are trying india is trying to hoist the flag of peace and coexistence everywhere in the world but we are cheated by the other countries you know in the radio speech of september 7th 1946 jawaharlal nehru outlined the foreign policy of india for the first time to general public to general public he broadcast the his speech on the foreign policy of india on 17 september 7 september 
for the public the speech gave an indication of the foreign relationship with india is going to foster the countries like america russia china you know he gave a speech that india is going to foster with other countries india is going to make a friendship with other countries like america russia and china jawarla nehru managed the foreign policies of india as a external affairs minister apart from being a prime minister of india also you know that time the jawarla nehru was the first prime minister of india he also maintained another portfolio called the foreign affairs ministry during that time he declared his foreign policy so our foreign policy is also called as the foreign policy of nehru because first of all for the first time he declared in his speech the india's foreign policy on 7th september 1946 so indian foreign policy is also called as foreign policy of nehru and various international and national issues have influenced the foreign policy of india it influenced various national and international issues in the foreign policy of india you know the issues like the national interests geographical interest political situation economic interest military issues public opinion then international situation and many other issues have influenced and shaped the indian foreign policy so our indian foreign policy consist all these uh, points all these aspects like the international issues the issues like the national issues geographical interest political situation of the country economic interest of the country and military force of the country is also influence the foreign policy of our country and it also contain the aspect like the public opinion he also heard he also heard the public opinion and international situations now the basic principles or the basic aspects of india's foreign policy or the first one is the panchashila principles panchashila principles these are the five principles like though the countries have their own social economical political and cultural systems every country though the countries have their own political situation political system economic system and cultural system they have always strive to foster healthy relationship with other countries of the world you know our political system is different and the political system of another country is different our cultural system our cultural richness is different than the culture of the other countries of the world so to foster a healthy relationship with other countries we are striving india is striving based on the similar lines in 1954 both india and china accepted the panchashila principles to foster their international relationship so in 1954 1954 both india and china they signed an agreement of panchashila principles between india and china that time jawaharlal nehru was the prime minister of india and chow en lai who was the prime minister of china between them the panchashila principles were signed in 1954 the five principles of panchashila principles are respecting each other's sovereignty and regional interest you know the first principle the first principle of panchashila agreement or panchashila principle 
is that respecting each other's sovereignty respecting each other's sovereignty sovereignty means the supreme power you know india should respect the sovereignty of china and china should respect the sovereignty of india so respecting each other's sovereignty and regional interest you know we have to respect the regional interest of other country and other country should respect the regional interest of our country then non invasion of each others non invasion of each others means not wage war against each other countries no invasion of non invasion of each other and non interference in their others internal issues non interference of other internal affairs or the other internal issues you know when we signed india india and china assigned a panchashil principles here the agreement is that non interference in each others internal issues india should not inter interfere the internal issues of the china and china should not interfere in the administrative inter, administrative issues or the matters of india and mutual cooperation and respect mutual cooperation and respect is also one of the important principle of the panchashil principles <coughs> mutual cooperation means cultural cooperation economic cooperation social cooperation political cooperation like mutual cooperation with mutual cooperation with each other countries and respecting the respecting the social religious and other aspects of other countries and peaceful coexistence peaceful coexistence is also the important principle of that panchashil principles these are the five principles of the panchashil principles now the non alignment movement you know the world war second after the end of the world war second you know the two world wars were fought in the world the first world war and the second world war the first world war was fought between 1914 to 1919 it was the first world war and second world war 1939 to 1945 second world war two world wars were fought and these two world wars they destroy the whole world the world was fully devastated destroyed the participant countries economic condition was ruined during the second two world wars after the second world war after the end of the second world war the democratic countries the world was divided in 1945 the world was divided into two blocks two super powers or the two blocks you know the democratic countries under the hegemony of usa and communist countries were led by the ussr you know the democratic countries were led by the usa all the democratic countries were on the side of the usa and all the communist countries were led by the ussr like two super blocks or two super powers were formed after the end of the second world war and in this in those days india followed a policy of being non aligned to either these blocks in that condition in that condition india did not join any power blocks it remain neutral it remain independent that is the non alignment policy of india it was successful in commanding faith from both the blocks it was successful in commanding the support and help from both the blocks in that critical condition also because the whole world was divided into two superpowers one was under the control of the 
all the democratic countries were under the control of the America, USA and all the communist countries were under the control of the USSR. But India remained neutral and it get help and respect from both the communist bloc and from the democratic bloc. It also deal, it secured financial assistance from USA. In that critical condition also, India gained a financial help from the USA, from the democratic bloc and military assistance from the USSR bloc. So it gained support from both the bloc. From USA, it get financial assistance and from USSR, it get military assistance from USSR. It is also there dealt with, dealt every international event independently. It controlled, it maintained every international issues, every international matters independently and welcomed or criticized any issues independently. It welcomed all the criticisms, it welcomed all the decisions or issues independently means it handled all the matters, all the issues independently during that time, the credit of creating an independent policy of being non-aligned and making it part of the Indian foreign policy goes to India. So that policy, that credit goes to the India because it maintained its own foreign policy and its own non-alignment policy. After Nehru, the Prime Minister like Lal Bahadur Shastri, Indira Gandhi also followed the principles of I foreign I in the foreign policy. After Nehru also, you know Lal Bahadur Shastri, Indira Gandhi, they also followed the same foreign policy as introduced by the Jawaharlal Nehru. <coughs> The wars held in 1965 and 1971 with Pakistan were guided by this policy. Later, the Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee tried to reform our foreign policy and strive to have a better relationship with Pakistan. When Vajpayee came to India as a Prime Minister, he reformed he tried to reform, he tried to revise the foreign policy of India and he also strived to maintain a good relationship with the Pakistan and other neighboring countries of India. <coughs> now, anti-apartheid policy, anti-apartheid policy, here apartheid is an attempt by a race or people of a particular skin color to subjugate another race of the people of different skin color in the name of supremacy. In the name of supremacy, you know, in the name of the supremacy means hatreding the other race. Apartheid policy means hatreding the other race you know, the black people, you know, the majority of the black people were hated by the minority white people. So that policy was also opposed by India. It is an attempt by a race or people of a particular skin color, subjugate another race of people of different skin color, you know, they oppose, they hate they neglect the particular people of a different color means it is a clash between the white major white minority people and black majority people they did, they are treated like a slaves you know the black people the black people were treated as a slaves or the lower class 
people by the white minority people that is uh, the apartheid policy that is a uh, racial discrimination apartheid means uh, apartheid means uh, a racial discrimination racial inequalities inequality between the white people and uh, the black people so india followed uh, the anti apartheid policy it is an affront to human rights and world peace it is very dangerous it is a hurdle to the world peace and it is denying the human rights apartheid it is denying it is denying the human rights because black people were not given all the rights they have no any rights all the rights were vested with the white minority people so it denied the human rights and it is creating the world peace also it is destroying the world peace foreign policy of india declared that no country in the of the world shall practice this no country of the world shall practice this apartheid policy means india supported anti apartheid policy it declared in the foreign policy that no country of the world shall practice apartheid policy till recently minority white people were ruling the majority black black people in south america you know in south africa minority white people were are ruling the majority black people in south africa india had declared its support to nelson mandela and his party national african national congress who were opposing the apartheid in their country you know nelson mandela nelson mandela who was the leader of the black majority people in south africa so for that when he opposed when he opposed the apartheid policy of the white minority people he was kept in jail for 26 years and in after his release he was successful and he brought he ensured all the rights to the black majority people because he formed the national african african national congress he was the leader of the african national congress and india gave a full support to nelson mandela so our country is opposing the apartheid policy followed by the south africa and you know in our foreign policy it is declared that no country shall practice no country shall practice this cruel policy called apartheid policy because it is hampering the national unity and integrity apartheid policy it is creating the it is hampering it is destroying the national unity and integrity because, because there is always clash between the white majority minority people and the black majority people and it is destroying it is hampering the unity and integrity of the nation so in our national policy it is declared that no country of the world shall practice the apartheid policy that is the racial discrimination now the disarmament it is also one of the important aspect of our foreign policy that is the process of elimination of specific arms step by step is called as disarmament you know the process of elimination of specific arms elimination reduction of a specific a particular means for example nuclear bombs nuclear bombs are the various very dangerous bombs so the process of elimination of a specific arms and ammunition arms step by step is called as discrimination there is an increased competition for the production 
sale and collection of arms in the world you know after the second world war so after the second world war also there was a steep competition for the collection for the production sale of the various type of arms and ammunition many countries of the world are worried that this massive scale of arms could lead to the third world war so the world is in danger the world is in danger many countries of the world worried that this massive scale of arms this massive scale of arms means this massive production of arms that sale of arms and production of arms collection of arms will lead to the third world war so the world was completely under the fear under the fear of the third world war because most of the powerful countries you know america and ussr us and ussr they are in a steep competition in the production of dangerous arms and ammunition and you know us it is also in the collection of collection production and sale of dangerous arms and ammunition so the country is in the fear of third world war countries with massive arms may attack the another country internationally or by mistake or by accident triggering the massive devastation you know if the countries if any country the countries with a massive arms a country with massive arms or a huge arms accidentally or or by mistake it waged war it will create a massive devastation the presence of nuclear arms makes issue more complicated you know the presence of the nuclear arms nuclear arms also created a uh, issue of more complication india being a peace loving country allocates the reduction of arms qualitatively as well as quantitative quanti- qualitatively and quantitatively because you know india it is a country of peace loving so it try to control the arms and ammunition qualitatively and quantitatively since the time of nehru india is supported disarmament process you know since nehru since prime minister jawala nehru india is supporting the dis- total disarmament policy or process though it is impossible and impractical to attain the total disarmament since the, since 1947 it is opposing the disarmament but still today also it is not attain the total disarmament total disarmament is not attained total disarmament is not possible as every country needs arms for its production every country you know we also need arms for our protection so every countries of the world they need the arms for its own protection an attempt can be made to reduce the number of arms so the attempts are made to reduce the number of arms constitution of india article number 51 advocates for the foreign policy that aims at establishing the international peace and cooperation establishing international peace and cooperation it is mentioned in the article of 51 article number 51 of our indian constitution it is mentioned the establishment of international peace and cooperation the department of external affairs of the central government plays a very important role 
in formulating our foreign policy it always considers our national interest and public opinion it also always considers the national interest and the public opinion indian foreign policy aims at strengthening eveno our foreign policy it aims at to strengthen the eveno united nations organization to strengthen the power of the united nations organization india strives to have a strong foreign relationship with the countries of the world through sarc and commonwealth of nations and india has been one of the major member of the united nations organization you know today india is one of the member of the united nations organization and india it declares that we have to use the nuclear weapons we have to use the, the nuclear power which is very dangerous it uh, declared that we have to use every country should use the nuclear power only for the productive purposes and not for the destructive purposes we have to use the nuclear energy nuclear power only for the productive purposes and not for the destructive purposes so these are the aspects of our indian foreign policy